really, really sucks that we only have one episode left and the plot just now started to get really, really good. When it wasn't about random events with all the monsters, which was so interesting, or focusing on the tournament, which was completely irrelevant, even with Siru, despite how interesting it was, it was still, in a way, irrelevant. But when it was just, if the series just focused on Goro, hell, if the series was even called One Punch Man, if it was just called Goro or Hero Association or whatever, it would have worked. It would have been good. But no. So there's just so many flaws, man. So many flaws. I can talk about how amazing this episode was, and I will in a moment. But right now, it's just I'm thinking about the total waste of potential that could have happened with this season. We're already on episode 11, and we only have one episode left for the season. And no real progress has been really made. When you really think about it, no progress. Monsters are out, editing's in chaos. But how are they going to wrap this up in one more episode? They can't. And if they do, it will make people more angry than they already are. So that's what I'm saying is, it's just a major disappointment. Because when it focuses on Goro, it gets beautiful. It gets really good. The development, progression, the struggles, the perspectives, not just by him, but also by the other heroes. The first part of it was very interesting. Goru, in a way, saw how all the monsters are attacking the place is because we humans aren't good people. We're not all 100% whole part of life. We do terrible things for our own happiness. Sometimes our success tumbles over someone's misery, believe it or not. You know, while we in America can live such a nice, good life, even with just a small, cheap apartment, we still have a roof over our heads, food on our tables, a safe environment, while in other countries, people are suffering, and they're angry about it. But this is a different kind of perspective. Say there are monsters in our oceans, but humans are polluting it with their race wastefulness and all the other stuff. So the monsters are mad. So the monsters are retaliating because they're tired of the, what the humans are doing. So, as humans feeling threatened, we send out the heroes to go destroy a monster. We cheer when the monster dies. But some people are thinking like, hey, this is kind of our fault. We're the ones that did this, so therefore aren't we kind of the bad guys? The monsters are doing everything they can to defend their territory, but we came over and just completely ruined everything. And now we also killed the monsters trying to defend their territory. You know, you could say that's just how nature works. The humans themselves are part of nature, despite how different we act than the rest of nature, we are still part of it nonetheless. It's just that we just have a bigger responsibility. That we should be doing more, but we don't. That being said, Goro synthesized with that monster, the crab monster, and everyone looked down on him for it because even if the monsters were in the right and the humans were in the wrong, in a day you still kind of want to defend your own species because it defends who you really want to survive, your own species or the other species. And most people say their own species because they don't want to die, despite how disgusting the other side may be. No one really wants to die, majority of people anyways. So seeing that perspective was very interesting. Then there's the one with the heroes as well. Goro's only caring about the upper class heroes. Then yet again, it also talks about what something that Hero Academia dove into as well. The ranking system is total trash. Same thing with um, even Bakuman with manga. They're talking about how the ranking system is trash. Yes, we have ranks of seven who's best and who's the worst. But then again, there are those who are really good who gets unnoticed. And even if it wasn't about um, Gauntlet Guy caring about ranks and stuff like that, like he was obsessed with, he still had a point. The ranking system does kind of find what Hero says. Imagine you're in danger in that world, and you see a low-ranked hero try to help you, but you have no faith in that hero whatsoever, and because of that, you were surprised how emotions can carry on, like, a, like an infection. And that hero's doing the best they can. Heck, I'll be happy if anyone, a normal guy, would come to my rescue if I need help. I would be grateful. But believe it or not, some people aren't like that. So if they see someone who's even more higher up the rank, they're like, oh yeah, they're, they're just butt-kissing all the way. 
And it sucks. That's just how it is in our society. So because of that, it does bring out some bad people. For instance, how Gar was trying to defend the kid the entire time. Even though he's like the anti-hero in this episode, the kid still feared him. And this is something that Goro just learned. Goro wants to become a monster, but he has to understand because you're becoming a monster, you won't be seen as a good guy to the norm, not even to the masses. People will see you exactly what you want to become. You want to be that monster. And since you want to be that monster, people will treat you like a monster. They will fear you, they will attack you, all that stuff. Clearly, Goro sympathizes the monster, but he don't understand even the monsters are in the right. They are still monsters. People are going to fear them. People are want to defend themselves against the monsters. Nonetheless. And that's just how it is in the world we live in. Mankind fears what does not understand. Fear the unknown. That being said, Gar was able to fend off against all the A-rank heroes until Genos came in. I know Genos gets his butt beat every time. Genos is the Weiss of this series. And who's Weiss? Weiss is from Ruby, if you don't know that. Genos used the times to lose, but actually in this show, he only really lost really once this time in this entire season. In the first episode, he beat the monster, and the other episodes, he beat the monsters, and he only really lost when he fought against a dragon-ranked monster by surprise. But he got a new upgrade the next day, and he became even stronger, and he vows to never, ever let his guard down. And Goro, who has the ability to adapt like a Saiyan from Dragon Ball Z, he even learned freaking the Dogman's abilities, how he was running all force. He probably still is not as strong as him, but he learned something. And despite how people think about Genos, you know, I like Genos. Genos is pretty cool, despite the fact that from last season he lost a lot. But this season he has improved. So I like Genos. I like his design. I like his theme song. He's a cool character, nonetheless. You know, real nice. But still, that's not the fact, though, is that Saitama was thinking about it. And, and another thing, not enough Saitama. The series is called One Punch Man, but you barely saw any One Punch Man whatsoever in this entire season. In a tournament, you barely saw him do anything. It was just terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And because of that, people became very disappointed in the series. You know, instead everyone's arguing about freaking black luster for God's know why, because sensitive ass Americans. Anyways, what I'm trying to understand here is that since there's no say Tom, it shouldn't be called One Punch Man no more. You should call it something else, because say Tom was barely on the screen, and it really sucks. You know, I want to see that One Punch Man goodness, but we can't. And now we're coming to a close where even Bonk and his brother showed up and it seems like Goru, he's going to need some time to rest because he's been injured under injuries. He just fought a group of A-class heroes. Janos was beating him in a way and now his teacher and his brother is there. It's, it's over now, man. And plus the monster are there, they're trying to get Janos because, not Janos, but Goru now because they're interested in him. Goru shows great potential to be a the strongest monster yet. He definitely has that potential. But because of that, the association wants him very badly, but he doesn't want that. He is a dude who wants to grow on his own, which is respectable. But because of that, the monsters are siding with him and there are direct orders to take him whether he wants to or not. They're probably going to force feed him those monster cells. And when they do, he's going to become one heck of a monster. Like, He's going to be something beyond dragon class, man. Like, you, you know, class, man. You got, you got tiger class, you got demon class, you got the god class, and you got the dragon class. But what's beyond dragon? <laughs> what's beyond dragon? That's the question, man. Well, anyways, I'm writing off from the, along about this as I already am. <sighs> One episode left. And it took at least till episode 10 for the series to get really good. Shame. That's all I gotta say. Just the, the, the disappointment right now with everything. It's just, oh my god, it's terrible. And what St. Thomas is doing right now? He's playing video games. So that's all I got for this, man. Are you enjoying One Punch Man or anything? Like, like I'm enjoying it now, 
But that's not a fact. It's just, it's just like the freaking um, Kenji no manga. I don't care if I'm enjoying it now. The fact that it took me this long to start enjoying it is a major disappointment and a shame. That has nothing to be impressed about, nothing to brag about. The fact that it takes you more than half of your show for people to get invested into it sucks. And that's terrible. You know, really terrible. Anyways, one up to left and review it then. So anyways, if you enjoyed my content and like to support the channel, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon so you know every time I upload. Background anime, sign out.